Welcome to the Q. My name is Lisa Moroni. I'm the Director of Business Development for the Town of Chelmsford, and we're back with another exciting episode after taking a little bit of time off. We have some great questions for a special guest, but first I'd like to introduce my co-hosts, uh, my tried and true colleagues, uh, Jen and Karen. Hi, hi, ladies. Thanks for coming Happy back. Happy New Year, everybody. Good yes. to see you. I'm great to so see great you. Great to see you guys. Happy to be back. I've got so many questions stored up. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Love it, Karen. That's great. Um, so thank you so much for your time today. And this special guest, her name is Amy Schramm, and I met her through the Greater Lowell Chamber of Commerce um, virtual networking event, of course, um, and she's from the Better Business Bureau. And I was really surprised to hear some of the great information she had to share because when I hear about the Better Business Bureau, I really just think of it as where um, patrons or customers go to file a complaint about a business and then you just wanna check some credibility. There's so much more to the BBB than you could ever think about and it's really become a very useful resource for businesses and small businesses as well with workshops and trainings and, and all kinds of great information. So I guess I'm gonna hold on to my questions and have Amy introduce herself here and just share a little bit and, of an introduction and, and what the Better Business Bureau is all about. Sure, well, thank you so much um, again for inviting me to be here. I do represent the Better Business Bureau as community relations manager for our office. And through my position, I travel throughout our service area of Eastern Massachusetts, Maine, Vermont, and Rhode Island. So on any given day, pre-pandemic, I was on the road uh, within that four state uh, uh, service area delivering free programs um, for community members. So, um, you know, we've pivoted over the course of the last 10 months or so um, and have I've been delivering free programming, educational programming and outreach, um, scams and fraud, identity theft concerns and covering topics like that. And, um, you know, what we'll get into today, which is more about BBB, I tend to call it BBB 101 um, and informing people who we are and what we do and how they can best utilize our free programs and services. I don't even know what to say, Amy, you're traveling the entire area of, of New England, um, which is like, I don't even know. I'm just thinking of, is that tens of thousands of businesses? I don't know, but I'm really happy to have you connected with Chelmsford. And my, my first question right off the gate is covering that much of a region, how can my businesses, specifically in, in this town, um, we have maybe 1500 businesses or so, a uh, large majority of them are, are small businesses, maybe 80% of our businesses are, are, are considered small, medium size. So how can they connect with you and how can they benefit from what you, um, what your programs and, and all those great resources? Sure, so have? one of the easiest, most basic things that, that any business can do is to register themselves on BBB.org. Essentially generate, it essentially generates a free business profile for business. And BBB.org in general has about 6 million business profiles on it. And what we want people to know is that it's any business, any industry, you know, we think of BBB, we think the roofers, the plumbers, the contractors, the auto mechanics, but we want to know that our, our chiropractor is licensed or our, our physical therapist is certified, the online retailer, especially nowadays with most of the shopping we're doing being online, that it's a legitimate online retailer. Taylor. So we're encouraging businesses and have always encouraged businesses to uh, register themselves for free, generate a free profile, and essentially help serve as like an extra website for a business too, especially for those businesses that are just starting out, those, those smaller um, businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, it's the first place that people might be able to find information on your business or just find your business um, in general. And uh, it's a really, really great first step for people. So if they were to do that, is that what they, the business would uh, upload their own certification? You're not really verifying any type of licensure or, or proper setups. It's basically that's that public information to set that foundation um, to, to kind of build on for, for just, um, you know, public info. 
Sure. So it's a little bit of both. So we're encouraging businesses to register themselves and then we will follow up with businesses, especially depending on the type of industry that it is. So for example, I mentioned that we had 6 million business profiles on BBB.org. About 400,000 of those 6 million business profiles are business profiles for accredited member businesses with BBB. So those are businesses that haven't just registered and generated a profile for themselves, they have also applied for BBB accreditation. And through that accreditation, um, there are eight standards of trust that we hold businesses accountable for in order for them to be you know, awarded this accreditation status. Essentially, the businesses that you see that utilize that BBB logo, that BBB torch of trust that you've seen on the side of a, a you know, an automobile or on a storefront or on a website, you see that, that logo and it's like a thumbs up. It just means that that business has applied for accreditation and been approved. Um, but in regards to licensing and certifications, a lot of the verification or the validation and the verification comes from those businesses that apply for accreditation. They cannot apply and be approved unless they are licensed and certified depending on their industry. And those businesses are required to uh, reveal that information, to, to give us that information. And we share that information with the public via that business profile. So while there may be a business that should be licensed and certified um, that is generating a free profile for themselves, um, they wouldn't be able to apply for accreditation if they weren't giving that information, but they could have a profile if they didn't, if that makes sense. <laughs> I, wow, I had no idea. Um, I just, I, I'm not even sure what I was expecting, but that's pretty extraordinary to think about that, that level and how much work that is on, on behalf of the BBB and how important that torch, that symbol is. Um, so, you know, perhaps we need to connect further to possibly, you know, work together and in, in supporting more directly to the Chelmsford business. Is I think I'm going to hand it over to Karen to hear if she has any uh, questions. I have a few more to ask, but you know, let let's hear from the co-hosts, and I'm going to hand it over to Karen for a little bit. Thanks, Lisa. So, Amy, this is really interesting for me because I am with Visiting Angels, and we provide senior home care, and that is not a licensed industry in the state of Massachusetts. We would like it to be because mom and pop shops can pop up anywhere and just say, okay, now I'm a home care agency, but it's really important to have vetted caregivers, to have workman's comp insurance, to have, um, you know, to have insurance that can take care of the clients if anything um, unfortunate happens during on our watch. Um, so we believe that um, licensing is really important. So we don't have anything, but could we still become an accredited business with the Better Business Bureau, which I think would help, um, you know, having that torch of approval from you guys. So even though we're not in the licensed industry, can we still be accredited with you? Absolutely. Yes. We hold businesses accountable. There are eight standards of trust. One of them is that if they are a business that requires a license or certification, that they would have to be forthcoming and transparent with that information. But there are many businesses out there that don't require that. Like you were mentioning, um, regardless of whether or not you wish that your industry was um, or this particular business, uh, you know, needed those things. Um, so that is absolutely something that, that you could pursue. We just want businesses to be transparent. We want businesses to be within good standing between the business to consumer community. We want there to be good relationships, um, you know, uh, being an established business. We want to know that businesses are um, communicating and connecting with their clients and customers and patrons. And so, you know, one of the eight standards of trust that we hold businesses accountable for is just responding to complaints. You know, we hope that there are businesses that don't have complaints, but we know that, you know, that's sometimes um, something that can come up, but we're looking for businesses that while they may have a complaint, they're at least responding to the complaint and they're um, communicating and opening up the doors of communication with the people that are filing these issues and or that might have these issues. So there, um, there are, are those eight standards of trust and that's just one of them, but it would be something that your business in particular wouldn't necessarily um, be required to you know, show us anything of that nature because it's just not an industry that requires it. As a small business owner, are there any downsides to me signing up to be a Better Business Bureau member? 
I mean, the short and long answer is no, <laughs> there would be, there, there are only positive benefits. If anything, generating that profile first and foremost is, in, is incredible. And then of course, like you were mentioning, applying for accreditation status and becoming a member of BBB, it can only enhance a business's, uh, you know, um, marketing and outreach and, and, and advertising and, and all of that. And also peace of mind, I think, for people. I think that symbol, our torch of trust really does, I sort of said a little earlier, it really sort of serves as a thumbs up for people. They see that and they at least know right away that some research has been done about this business, that some information um, is out there and that it's an established business in good standing within the business to consumer community. So it can only help. And that's only really just for the visual side of things, just for the outside perspective, let alone the inside perspective, where if you're a business owner and you're a member, and you don't have a website, let's say, our team creates a free website for you. They manage the website. If it's a business that doesn't have a logo, they will create and establish a logo for that business. They'll work with the business. Um, they'll change the logo. If there's a time where the business decides they'd like to change it, we have a team that will go out and film um, professional videos for businesses. And those videos can be used on our platform, on the business's platforms. We have a team that goes out and takes professional photos for a business. And for a lot of businesses, um, they just don't have, I don't know if it's uh, um, the time or um, the contacts to be able to, to take care of those sorts of marketing needs. Sometimes people have it in-house that a lot of times people outsource their marketing and it can be very expensive, very, very, very expensive. And so um, for example, we base our um, costs and our um, uh, the fees that businesses would pay based off of their accreditation status, based off of how many employees they have. So a smaller business, I believe, and don't quote me on this, but we do have it on our website and it is there. It's, we're super transparent. We, we have it on there for people to see. I believe the first sort of um, uh, bracket is like one to nine employees and it's like $51.92 a month or something for a business. And we had um, done some research in terms of just a website alone. And oftentimes it costs upwards of $5,000 just to have a website created for you up to five and $10,000 just for a basic sort of package. And that's just to have the website created, not even to continue to manage it and have mm -hmm. updates and things like that. So that alone and marketing materials, you yeah. know, business cards, and all that's included as well. Right. And it's really as much as the business wants to utilize your services, you pretty much have wraparound, you know, products and options. So if they want to just do the free level, if they want to take it higher, they can. Um, exactly. Great, great opportunity. So thank you so much. So, um, so Jen, any, any burning questions you have? And and, um, you know, maybe, I'm sorry, maybe you could give a little bit of background to Amy so she knows the, a little bit of what you, what you do here for Chum, for the town of Chelmsford. Yeah, so Amy, thanks for joining us today. I'm the community services coordinator here for Chelmsford. Um, and I work actually very um, collaboratively with a lot of our local small businesses. Um, my, my role here is primarily to help our residents connect with them. Um, with social service needs. Um, and oftentimes um, those services come from our local businesses. So I have a really you know, nice cooperative, collaborative relationship with a lot of our businesses. But I was curious to um, find out from you, you mentioned early on that you have some free programs that are um, available to businesses who join the BBB. So I'd love for you to talk about some of those. Sure. So um, there's so many different facets to the programming and involved with the Better Business Bureau. So one of the ways that we're conducting outreach, can you hear me? Can I freeze? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I thought I might've frozen again. One of the ways that we're conducting our outreach is in delivering free programs for community members for businesses on a variety of topics that might be useful and helpful to them. One of the other ways that we've been um, most recently collaborating with businesses um, on free programming and outreach is inviting businesses to deliver virtual programs and webinars um, through our BBB platform platform. So we're hosting businesses on a variety of topics. Um, we have a program coming up in a few weeks on, you know, how to make your home office work 
for you, especially because now that's where most people are functioning out of. We just had one the other day on, you know, LinkedIn, developing a LinkedIn profile for yourself and why it's important to your business or why it's, it's important to an individual to um, have a LinkedIn profile if they're looking for work. So um, in that sense, we're, we're really hoping to give small businesses or businesses in general a platform for themselves. We are on every social media platform that you can imagine. We're on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram, and we're sharing businesses within our community. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, a shout out on Facebook or whether it's a business that has an event coming up, whether it's a ribbon cup, uh, ribbon cutting, or they're, you know, offering a discount for a certain amount of time on a product. And we're, we're helping those businesses get the word out and showcasing that. And then we have an entire portion of our website, I should mention, entire portion of BBB.org um, that is dedicated just to small businesses and it's a small business help center. So it's offering um, an opportunity for people interested in starting a business or maybe people that have already started a business um, and giving them information on, you know, the the um, links to follow if they have to apply for, let's say, a certain certificate or licensure or something like that, um, and tips and tricks on, on how to build their brand and, and, and things of that nature. And that's just the general um, scope um, in terms of outreach for and with businesses, um, not even some of the benefits that being a BBB member would offer, like free websites, free logo design, and, and things of that nature. Amy, these sound like amazing programs. Is the Better Business Bureau a private organization or are you a, a division of the government or the Small Business Administration? We are actually a nonprofit organization, a 100 year old nonprofit organization, but we do work very closely with government agencies and other local organizations, chambers of commerce. We have a very strong relationship with the Massachusetts Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation. We have a very strong relationship. In fact, we have what's known as a strategic alliance memorandum with the Small Business Administration. Um, and this is going across you know, our four states too, trying to connect to the AG's offices and all of these other um, agencies and organizations that are also offering outreach to, um, to the public and to the communities. But we are a nonprofit organization, believe it or not. <laughs> well, Amy, you are great at what you do. You're so energized and enthusiastic. And, and this group here um, on, on this program today. We all love what we what we do. And um, it's great to have you on. So what comes to mind as I'm listening to you talk a little bit is going back to my original comment of I always thought of the Be Better Business Bureau as a way to just check out if somebody had a lot of complaints about uh, the local mechanic or something. So how do you process a complaint? Because we've all seen on Yelp or wherever some social media complaints will get on there. And some of them are not always well-founded. It's just, you know, somebody stirring up trouble or maybe not a valid complaint for some reason. How do you address complaints about businesses and, and um, you know, do you spend time researching that? Do you reach out Do you, you know, what is the process for that? It's, it's such a good question. And it is remarkable that, that people do come to us to file complaints against businesses that they might've had an issue with. Um, and that, you know, for a very long time, that is what people thought, you know, we solely did. What we're hoping for is that people will utilize BBB as a free precautionary resource tool so that they'll come to us, they'll utilize our database of 6 million businesses so that they're less likely to choose a business that in the end they may have an issue with and then need to file a complaint. However, the complaint process, we make easy for, for every party involved. We want people to feel like there is an outlet and we can be that for them. So um, in terms of filing a complaint, what we do is we have an online uh, form within our BBB.org platform, um, and we're looking for businesses to file their complaints online. If it's an individual, I'm sorry, looking for an individual to file their complaints online. If it is someone that's not comfortable with an online platform, um, they can always call our office and we will send something in the mail. So we won't take any complaints over the phone. We don't want anything to be lost in translation. Mm -hmm. So the timing might be a little bit different as if, you know, if you're sending something in through the mail versus doing doing it online, but we want to make sure that we're getting all of this evidence and information in the appropriate way. So they would, an individual would file a complaint. 
What happens with the complaint once it's verified and validated um, is that it gets displayed on this business's profile. It will stay there for three years. And then um, what I actually find most interesting about the complaint process isn't necessarily the complaints themselves, although I think that they're very important. It's that the business is not only, you know, encouraged to respond to the complaints, but that the response and the dialogue that occurs back and forth between the business and the individual that's, you know, filed the complaint, it all gets displayed. You know, none of the, the contact information or the names are displayed on the business profile, but that we're seeing the complaints and then we're seeing how the business is handling it. Of course, if they're handling it at all, if they're an accredited business, accredited member business, they're required if they want to keep their status, but it gets displayed for three years. Um, and I, I'm going to mention our customer review portion of of the website too, because um, there's a relation to the to the complaint process as well, or the complaint portion. Because what we've started to do is we've um, over the the last few years um, really uh, tried to create an extra piece of our platform where people can go and write about their positive experiences. We know that there's so much negative um, out there and that we want there to be a platform for, for people to write about the, the negative experiences, but we also want people to write about the positive experiences too. So people can write a review, and I bring this up as well, because they can write a positive, a neutral, or a negative review. But I wanna mention the difference between the two. Let's just say it was a negative review versus a complaint. You know, what the difference, would be. I tend to, to use this as a, a very simple example. A complaint would be that somebody purchased a washing machine and the business delivered a dryer. And then there's just some sort of lack of communication where the business is refusing to come pick up the dryer and deliver the washing machine. There's a receipt, there is evidence that there is, you know, that there was a miscommunication or that something wasn't happening that was supposed to. A negative review would be that somebody ordered a washing machine, the washing machine was delivered, but the customer was really unhappy with the customer service, or, you know, they just felt like the technician spent a little too long hooking it up or something like that. So it's much more subjective. So a complaint is incredibly objective. There is um, a specific solution and resolution that the customer filing the complaint is looking for. And there is evidence to, to um, help their case of saying, you know, this is what I asked for, this is what I paid for, this is what I signed the contract for. Whereas the review is a little bit more subjective, but we still want people to feel like there's a platform for them to express themselves. And I will also say this in regards to a business's accreditation status, as well as their letter grade. A business, um, beyond just being, let's say, a member accredited business um, or not, every business has a letter grade. So you may find an accredited business I'm sorry, you may find a non-accredited business that has an A rating. You would just never find an accredited business that has an F rating. And the complaints and the, the process of filing a complaint and once they're, you know, they're solidified as legitimate, they do, they can play a factor into a business's letter grade, which would then play a factor into a business's accreditation status, whereas the customer reviews do not. But we still, again, wanted that platform for people to be able to express themselves. Right, right. I think all of that makes sense, which adds so much trust into the Better Business Bureau um, and, and thus the torch, you know, the, the torch of trust and, and what that symbol means to people spending money at a business and what it means for a business to achieve that um, through that eight standards of, of trust. Um, so as you're talking and I'm listening, you know, it would be great if you'd give some thought to being a part of Chelmsford, we're, we're getting ready to reintroduce our ribbon cutting program. And we actually have a handful of businesses that have opened up, um, new businesses that have opened up. And I would love to be able to send you an invitation. We're gonna start with some virtual ribbon cutting events and, and including my Q team here. Uh, but it would be great to have you connect with businesses just as they open and, and come right into the community and start to integrate and connect with the network of, of resources uh, from the beginning. Because I suspect that some of our businesses could really benefit from your services and not just now because we're in this recovery mode, but it seems like the BBB is just an excellent tool and and you know perhaps if conversations continue 
we could talk about what might be missing or needed in Chelmsford as a way where we could work on new programming or, or another partnership um, or something along those lines. We're always looking to address the needs and, and how to really add as much strength to the economy, um, particularly coming into 2021. We know, you know, what we're kind of on, what what we're trying to emerge from, and it has to be teamwork, right? So, um, so I'm going to wrap it up unless any of my other Q team members have any burning questions for the Q uh, before we said send Amy on to the rest of her day. Anything else? Okay. All right. I think we've covered a good introduction, a good initial, um, you know, discussion. Thank you so much, Amy, for joining us. It's been great to have you here and uh, looking forward to getting another Q episode out to the public. Please contact any of us anytime we can be of assistance to you in the community of Chelmsford. Thank you Thanks, so Amy. much. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. I appreciate all of you. Thank you.